A couple of months ago, I was browsing my annulus feed when I noticed a curious pattern. A not insignificant amount of my friends were absolutely tearing through Futari wa Precure. Now I knew of the show's existence, but was completely baffled at why a show that had finished airing over a decade ago was now picking up steam among my circles. It finally came to me when I finished catching up with Hugto Precure. The latest episode had featured Cure Black and Cure White, the Futari wa of Futari wa Precure. And while it now made sense why the OG series had such renewed interest, it got me thinking about exactly what drives us to do things like binge 100 episodes for characters that have less than 10 minutes of screen time. I think the answer is that context is king, or queen. Human beings are curious creatures, and obtaining proper context behind something can be a large source of enjoyment. In this case, my friends are seeking to establish a stronger connection with Nagisa and Honaka, thus making their appearance in Hokuto carry that much more weight. In philosophy, there exist two fancy terms in regards to knowledge, a priori and a posteriori. And despite sounding like they're straight from the Middle Ages, their meanings are quite simple. A priori literally means from the earlier, and represents knowledge that is independent of experience, basically things you could reason for yourself without consulting any outside reference, even your own senses. However, Cure White and Cure Black's appearances in Hokuto Precure are example of a posteriori knowledge, the literal definition being, not surprisingly, from the later. You would have to know Futari wa Precure's existence in order to know who they are, and you would have had to have seen the show to know what they're all about. This dichotomy between a priori knowledge and a posteriori knowledge is an interesting component of how we view anime. It's not exactly a perfect comparison, since a priori knowledge refers to things like math and tautologies, i.e. fun things are fun. But I'm using it here to refer to what we can glean from purely the anime itself, compared to what we get with the benefit of outside knowledge and context. You're kind of able to have your cake and eat it too, meaning you're able to derive the meaning and enjoyment inherent within a show's given narrative, and then later reap the benefits of recontextualization that a posteriori knowledge provides. And I can't think of a better show that showcases this than Madoka Magica. Depending on the framework from which you approach it, different themes are either emphasized or outright revealed entirely, making the gaining of perspective something that everyone should pursue, it can only make a good show even better. Not to say that Madoka isn't already fantastic on its own merits. One can clearly see that purely from a priori knowledge, or everything that's in the show itself. For example, a common thing to hear is that one must watch at least up to episode 3 of Madoka in order to give it a fair shake. However, this implies that Madoka doesn't reveal what kind of show it is at first glance. There is a noticeable attempt at misdirection, but Shaft and Udabuchi left plenty of clues for one to pick up on. A simple look into the directing and cinematography betrays the show's sinister nature, well before episode 3. In fact, this intricate attention to detail and symbolism is not unique to Madoka's start. There is plenty of foreshadowing to be gleaned if one simply pays attention. But even to the most inattentive viewer, I don't know how you can make it through the fever dream that is the opening scene set to Califina's Magia and still expect a happy-go-lucky magical girl anime. However, what happens if you go into Madoka having read Goethe's Faust, a well-regarded piece of German literature? Well, it'd be pretty much like seeing the Matrix or turning the lights on. A number of doors leading to renewed appreciation of the show open to you. You'd probably notice how Madoka's beginning mirrors Faust's, with the two titular characters both lamenting their positions in life, and you bet that you wouldn't trust Mephistopheles' stand in QB for a single second since you were probably anticipating the infamous Faustian bargain. If your fan subgroup was dedicated enough, or if you just really liked cryptography, the opening title card, whose runes proudly displays Prologue in Heaven 2011, would clue you in immediately. You would be primed to look for the themes of morality, life and death, and spirituality that are present in Faust, and be on the edge of your seat seeing how Madoka presents its own version of a classic story. And you'd kind of already be expecting a tragedy knowing that Faust accepted a bargain with consequences he was ill-prepared to deal with. Though, I acknowledge that the vast majority of anime watchers probably haven't read Faust. The point of this video is not to admonish you for not having read classic literature, but rather encourage you to seek context, any context, since it can only add to the experience. For example, I didn't go into Madoka with Faust in mind, and as such missed many of the Faustian elements. Instead, I came into it just having taken psychology, meaning the doors that opened for me were different, but I think just as valuable. You see, there's a famous thought experiment known as the trolley problem. 
you're a train track operator faced with a dilemma. A runaway train is barreling towards a group of five unknowing workers, while another track only has a single worker. Do you sit back and do nothing? Or do you switch the tracks to sacrifice one for the lives of many? This ethics thought experiment has been discussed for quite some time, and while some may have the answer come to them immediately, it usually ends up being a hard choice. Utilitarianism indicates that not only is it the moral choice, it is obligatory for one to switch to tracks. However, some argue that making an active decision in the process makes you responsible for the death when it would have just been an unfortunate incident otherwise. QB presents basically the exact same dilemma from a utilitarian view. Is the suffering of a relative few justifiable to save the lives of many? In this case, many being the entire universe. While one can pick up on this question of whether or not the greater good is worth it, having knowledge of the trolley problem adds a new tinge and nuance to the theme, and if one wished, they could read up on the decades of prior discussions surrounding it. Is it worth losing Madoka for the sake of everyone else? Ultimately, the end of the series, as well as Homura, says no. Something interesting to note is that this theme of one's actions being part of a greater whole is also present in Faust meaning one can arrive at the same conclusions from different starting points. You just need to go out and get them. Speaking of starting points, when one watches Madoka within their anime career can drastically change their opinion of the show. For example, if you are relatively new to anime, you might consider Madoka darker than you expected of the Maho Shoujo genre. And to that statement, anyone who has seen Princess Tutu or Sailor Moon might laugh at you. Atelier Emily notes in her blog For Me in Full Bloom that for her, Madoka was always a celebration of the magical girl genre. It takes existing tropes from other series of its ilk and revels in them, rather than repositioning them to say something new. The ending of Madoka, where Hamura Akemi and Madoka Kaname embrace each other in a galaxy, is a fantastic homage to the finale of Sailor Moon Sailor Stars. This is where AniTube and AniBlogging excel. You could say a large portion of their value lies in the provision of a posteriori knowledge. Another common misconception is that something like Yukiyuna is a hero is a Madoka ripoff, but like Zarya states in the aptly named Stop Calling Everything a Madoka Ripoff, their differences become readily apparent given one has the tiniest foothold in the genre. As for me personally, watching Cardcaptor Sakura and Princess Tutu ramped up my appreciation of something like Madoka, and I think it's incredibly important to go back and mingle with the classics. They've stood the test of time for a reason, and you should know how a genre plays it straight before diving into the quirks and twists that future iterations may implement. I often get comments along the lines of, Man, I wish I could see anime the way you do. But at the risk of dispelling this notion that I'm some sort of enlightened mind, I'm not special. I just have a particular background and prior context that I bring to the shows I watch. Hell, do you know what was on my mind watching the last third of Cardcaptor Sakura? The fact that neurons are myelinated. Because without a little bit of resistance, nerve impulses can't travel as fast, and I saw Edieto as providing that pushback for Sakura, forcing her to adapt and become stronger. As a result, he was never that much of a villain to me, due to my background in biology. So here's my plea to you. Read more things, watch more anime. Because how you experience anime is shaped by what contextualization you have available to you. Watching One Punch Man is a riot in and of itself, but it's a different experience entirely having seen DBZ. The unorthodoxy of Ori Monogatari's main character may be lost in someone who has never seen or read a shoujo. And while I saw a landmark African text in Little Witch Academia, Caffeinated Telescope's interpretation of Akko representing a young creator is just as valid, if not more in line of Yoshinari's intent. Whether it means reading literature, watching old anime, or more content from me and my peers, I just want you to give yourself more doors to open. It can only make already great anime somehow even better. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Here's a reminder that for most of my videos, I provide additional reading and references in the description below. Not only because I want to be accountable, but because I want to encourage this expanding of perspective that I stress in this video. If you enjoyed the video, you may enjoy this one by Core Reviews, talking about why we should watch old anime without resorting to weird Latin words like I had to. And of course, if anything I said was wrong, I'm sorry. I must have stuttered.